Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into bourbons I wish I had bunkered or bourbons you need to bunker now. But before we get into that, please do me that favor. Like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton, and we seriously appreciate the support. But let's get in today's video. So today, I'm talking about bourbons to bunker and this can be past tense or present it's really depending on what you can get your hands on so first one i'd like to bring up which i don't even have the bottle anymore because well it's gone it was here one day but now it's gone and that is early times bib it recently sold and by recently i mean like I, two years ago, so not really recently, but around two years ago, early time sold, they rebranded the whole bottling, they changed the sourcing, and the whiskey is now straight up garbage. The old stuff that was from Brown Foreman uh, with the little plastic top on it was one of the best daily drinkers I've ever seen in the bourbon industry, especially for like the 20 bucks for a liter it was. I would have loved to bunker the heck out of that plastic top early times bib if I could go back and buy like nine cases, I freaking would, cause that would still be my daily drinker. And then after that one, another one that's in that same vein of Brown Foreman, Old Forester 1920. I'm a huge Old Forester fan. You all know that already. Old Forester is my absolute shit. That being said, this was one of my favorite drinks when I was just starting out in whiskey and for probably like the first three years of my whiskey journey, it was all Old Forster 1920. And then they rebranded to this branding, this branding. And I'll be honest, this bottle is still very good. It's, it's decent, it's adequate, it's just, it's a shadow of its former self. It was a monster. It was a $55, 115 proof brown forming goodness. And then they rebranded and now the stuff inside of this, it just tastes younger. Still a decent bottle, but not what it used to be. And after that one, Wild Turkey 101, which is strange for me because I absolutely love Wild Turkey 101. That being said, this bottle has lost a step to me. I don't know what it is, and I haven't really found out a reasoning why, because, you know, the label changed a hot minute ago. Nothing's really changed recently with Wild Turkey 101 as far as I'm tracking. Might just be me, but seemingly about a year or so ago, Wild Turkey 101 started not being as good as it once was. And again, that could entirely be me, and this could be all in my head, and I could have made it all up, and it's all BS, and none of it freaking matters. But I feel like the bottles of Wild Turkey 101 I was buying six months ago, a year ago, were significantly better than the ones I recently bought. And I'll be honest, I go through probably one Wild Turkey 101 every few months. It's still a really great value, like great bottle, great value. I just remember being nuttier, more cinnamony, more darker. And now it's very, very sweet with a little bit of a nuttiness going on in there, but it lost a little bit of a depth. And now going back to another Brown Foreman bottle, which this one is actually attainable nowadays. So the next time I see some, I'm buying the whole freaking shelf of these because I didn't know these were an absolute monster when I found them, but old school, JD bib. So this isn't the JD bib that, you know, you can find at your typical traditional total wine. This was like the travelers exclusive, or they had these at like military posts and whatnot. But this is the old Forster bib. That is the old Forster bib we should have had or really wanted. I don't know. I think it's a different mash bill. Cause I think this is old number seven. And I think the other one's a different mash bill. That being said, this is freaking fantastic. It's very similar to the, you know, the newer one that you can find everywhere, but this is $30 for a liter where that's, um, you know, $30 for a 700 milliliter bottle. So you're getting an extra 300 milliliters. And this has a little bit of extra depth to it. That darkness, a little bit more age and a little bit more oomph to it is going to this like more, more depth, more complexity, more intrigue. Like it's just overall a like, better developed 100 proof Jack Daniels product. They're both clearly Jack Daniels products, but one just has a little bit more going on than the other. And then after that one, one that is long gone, unfortunately, Knob Creek 
ultra aged single barrels. That's we're just going to call this a whole ass category because these were some of the greatest stuff. So Knob Creek about, I think two, three years ago, they decided, oh, hey, we're releasing a bunch of single barrels with super high age statements. What if we just start releasing aged products? And that's when they really started cranking out like 12 year old, 14 year old, 18 year old. I, yeah, I think 18 is the most recent one or whatever. But that being said, this is a 14 year old, 120 proof Knob Creek single barrel that I bought for like 55 bucks about like two, two and a half years ago or something like that. And I freaking wish I could go back in time and buy like nine to uh, all, all the bottles, as many of these as I could, because this was my one and only one. So I've been nursing the heck out of it. You know, this is kind of a celebratory top shelf pour for me, just because super complex, so freaking amazing, an absolute incredible bourbon. I would bunker the ever living crap out of those. I don't care if it's a new label. I just want a 12 year old single barrel pick that I can just bunker because those are absolutely incredible i mean they're great at nine years old but tack an extra three plus years on that man they get so freaking much better and then going back to one that could actually be bunkered nowadays elijah craig barrel proofs and i'll say this is all speculatory if you will so i haven't had the most recent batch that's non-12 year age stated so i can't really speak on behalf of that but if you have the money to and you find an Elijah Craig, whether you need it or not nowadays, I'm going to say bunker it because, and again, this is kind of the conspiracy theorist or like, you know, me being negative or, you know, kind of a pessimist, if you will. Uh, I think Elijah Craig barrel proof is going to drop in quality. I hope to God they do not. But again, the pessimist inside of me is saying they're going to drop in quality. So buy as many of these great, fantastic 12 year old age stated Elijah Craig's while well, you still can. Let's move away from bourbon really quickly. And I'll finish this out because I know this is primarily a bourbon video, but high West double rye store picks. So, and this, I can also preface this with the bourbons too, because High West has now changed their single barrel program. So previous to this, they were very heavy on the whole, oh, hey, let's do a single barrel. Let's get it finished. And uh, we'll sell those, you know, finished barrels to, you know, stores, so on and so forth. And that was how they ran their single barrel program. And they were probably one of my favorite single barrel programs because that, because I felt like every single one was absolutely incredible. And recently I, you know, I've seen them kind of fall off and I'm not really seeing a lot of them. And just recently I found out that they are moving away from doing the finish picks and moving completely into just, you know, bourbon, just they're straight up bourbon. So no more finished rise, no more finished bourbons for store picks, which is unfortunate because those were my favorite of their products. The last two, Arizona Total Wine Malt Picks. Balconis and Del Box. So these are both two picks from my local Total Wine from um, Del Box as well as Balconis. This one has been the best Del Box bottle I've ever had. So this is a non-mesquite smoked one and it is absolutely incredible. I've even gone to the distillery and all, and I haven't had anything from them that is at that same level of quality as that single barrel from Total Wine. That one just hits so much better than everything else. And I only bought the one bottle of it, so I really wish I could go back and buy another one, but unfortunately they're out of it. And then after that, Balconis, Texas single malt. Uh, this is another one of those picks. It's a 48 month old pick and this thing is like freaking motor oil this is absolutely incredible the probably the darkest bottle of whiskey i have this is a wrap for today's video please do me that favor like comment and subscribe that helps us out a ton also check out the facebook instagram and the patreon links for that are all down there below let me know what you thought about today's video also let me know what would be some bottles that you think people should be bunkering nowadays or bottles that you wish you had bunkered while they were still freaking fantastic again that's a wrap though so cheers y'all we will see you later